but once I go to slide five, notice I have this update button. So I'm going to update, and there it is. So anything you put, whether it's pictures, graphic organizers, will update onto their slide. Isn't that really cool? So you don't have to have your whole interactive notebook done from the beginning. Just because I've tried a lot of things. I've went through like three different styles of interactive notebooks. So I think I've got it down to what I think works best. Um, and hopefully it can save you guys a lot of time if you just skip all of the mistakes that I've made and just go with what is going to be explained in this video. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, Digital Interactive Notebooks Volume 2. Let's go. Welcome back to the Math Dojo. My name is Michelle. For those of you who are new here, I am a middle school math teacher from Los Angeles. So um, this video is a long time coming. Um, right after I put out my first digital interactive notebook video, um, I had a few questions and I just felt like I needed to do a second part of this video. Um, so that's what we're doing today. <laughs> We are going to be discussing in this video how to assign and push out the, interact the digital interactive notebooks to your students so that you can still make little edits here and there. Um, you can still make revisions and those revisions can um, be seen on your student side as well because I know that was a big question um, the last time I made the video. Um, we're also going to be talking about grading. So um, there's a few ways to do everything that I'm going to be talking about in this video, but I'm going to talk about them. Uh, and I'm only going to show you how to do what's what's been working best for me um, just because I've tried a lot of things. I've went through like three different styles of interactive notebooks. So trust me, I, I, I think I've got it down to what I think works best. Um, and hopefully it can save you guys a lot of time um, if you just skip all of the mistakes that I've made and just go with um, what is going to be explained in this video. And then I'm also going to include all of what I'm talking about today. I'm going to include it in a slide down in the description for you um, because it's always good <laughs> to have the bones of uh, the book for you guys to start your own. I'm also going to be showing you how to um, troubleshoot or how to um, undo the students mistakes on their end and it's it takes a few clicks you can view their history um, and see every time that they've logged in to change it you need to be able to show uh, that they've already turned it in once uh, you graded it and this is the second chance that they had to redo the work so this is why you didn't get full credit so it's kind of like um, your safety net in a way to have that digital footprint, I guess you can call it. Um, and so they won't be able to say, why am I getting this grade? So I'm going to take a little bit of time at the end to go through that and how to work through all of the possible things that can come up and that students can can say, like the dog ate my homework type of, type of thing. So you guys need to grab a cup of coffee, grab your tea, because this is going to be a long one, all right? I'm just fair warning you right now. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, Digital Interactive Notebooks, volume two. Let's go. All right, you guys, so the first thing that we are going to cover is how to kind of push these slides out to your students. And um, this is how I'm using them. So this is an example of my eighth grade. Um, we're on lesson two right now, but um, this is gonna do every lesson, uh, which is about a week or a little bit more since we're in remote learning, but every week they get a new notebook and they are able to, they decorated their notebook um, their first week. And so when I give them their new notebook, um, I have them delete this cover page and have them copy and paste their cover page in from their other notebook just so it keeps our slide pages correct. I just have this one in, um, but you don't have to do that. I'm going to show you right now actually um, what's going to be linked and what's not. So once you have um, one thing before we get started, one thing you have to do is you have to go up to the share button and you have to make sure if you, if you click on this right here, you have to make sure that anyone with the link can view. Um, that's the first thing because this I this is one thing that I had trouble with. Um, you have to make sure it's like this before you start anything. Okay, so make sure that that is there. You don't have to copy the link or anything like that. Just make sure that your sharing options are to everyone with the link can view. Okay, then what you're going to want to do, this is your master copy. You have one copy that whatever you make changes. So, so let's say I go on here to make a change. This is a test and you want uh, to push that out to your students. Um, 
you're going to make all of your changes through this copy here. And all of my slides are blank. My week one slides, so this is what they had looked like before. And then I just took a copy of all of that and um, made them blank again because all of my links are, are linked to the right pages that I wanted them to be. So um, I just, that's the way I did it. But you just need a blank new notebook and you need enough slides. So I did, if you see here, I did a few slides that are just like need to knows, like how to link them, how not to uh, play with the link button, how to update their slides. Um, and then that's about it. But if you see here on my day one, so slide seven is the first, um, day one slide. So what I did was I just added 10 blanks. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 blank ones. And I know that my 11th slide in every one is a piece of lined paper. The reason why I do this is because if any students say like, hey, um, I don't have that or I can't update this page. When I go in to look at their notebook, I can see like, oh, you deleted a page because you only have nine blank pages instead of 10 or, and I know what they've done. So I, I have, so my purple starts day two and I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and then my blank one. So that's what I did here. And these are just your placeholder slides. Um, I'm gonna have this template uh, linked below so that you guys can have this for yourself. But I have some, um, at the end of my day five, I have some few blank slides just in case I need to say anything, make any announcements. And then I have a few glossary pages and 72 is why I stopped. So um, for my lesson one, I didn't use all of those slides. I used about four slides per day or five slides per day. But when you have those days where you need a vocabulary and a direct instruction, your guided practice, your independent practice, and let's say an exit ticket or whatever it is that you may do, you might need um, those 10 slides on one given day. So I just made 10 just in case because you cannot add or delete slides. The only way that you can get your work on students' notebooks is if you just have them update. So if I were to, from here, go in and add a slide, they would not see this slide that I just added um, because that slide would not be linked, okay? And I will go over that all right now. So um, you need to start off with your master copy and then you are going to go to file and make a copy of your entire presentation. So once you hit that button, so it's going to take you here and I um, labeled it already um, student copy instead of master copy, okay? So this is the student copy, um, and this is just so that I can go back and check that my, um, my pages are linked and all of that. So once you have your student copy, you're going to want to, so I'm going to link everything except for the cover page. So I don't want to link the cover page because they are going to be making their own, and I don't want their page their cover page to look like mine. I want uh, them to be able to customize. So I'm not going to click on slide number one. I am going to click on slide number two and I'm gonna scroll down to the very end. I'm gonna hold down shift and click on my last slide. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna highlight all of your slides here and you're just going to hit the delete button. Okay, delete all of your slides that you want to be linked. Okay, so now you should only have this, and you have to do it in this order where you're making a copy, um, deleting the slides, go back to your master version, and wherever you want to start linking, you're going to click, scroll all the way to the bottom, shift and click to highlight all of your slides. Okay, so all of your slides are highlighted. Now you are going to copy those slides so you can command or control c or you can copy from here okay but you need to copy those slides and then go to your student version make sure that this is not highlighted so make sure it's here and paste okay here is where you have to hit this button here link you have to link the slides that you just pasted you need to link them to your master copy Okay, so I just clicked on that link and now you notice all of my pages have this link. You have to, have to, have to say it 20 times to your students. Do not press this link button. And I have these um, that explain it again. Do not ever click the link button. And I just tell them during class, if you 
hit this link. It's the, the drop down options. So this will open the source and it will open your master copy. You don't want them playing with that. This will unlink um, their copy from your copy. And so anything that you write on yours, they won't get. Um, and then this just shows all of their linked objects. So it just highlights everything that's linked. So I just tell my students, if you click on this button, any one of these means that you're gonna lose the work that you've already done, because it is, it really does. Um, if they unlink it, when you link your pages back to theirs, um, it's, it, it's gonna link these blank pages. Even if you do a template, so let's say if you had um, this was the template, it would be, you would link back this template and it would be blank. So all of the work that they've done, they wouldn't get that work back. So I just tell them, don't click it. I haven't had a student click it yet. So uh, let's hope that it never happens, but just reiterate it over and over and over again, not to click that button. Okay. But once you have your pages linked, you are set to go as far as pushing things out to your students. So once everything is set to go, then from here in this student copy, um, from the student copy, this is what you're gonna be sharing on Google Classroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to Google Classroom. I'm going to create a new assignment. And here I'm going to type out, um, this is gonna be our lesson two, digital interactive notebook. Okay. Um, and then the description. So I use this notebook to complete any interactive assignments that we'll have during lesson two. And I put a note right here. I will not, oh, I will be creating individual assignments for you to turn in one or more slides at a time. Please do not ever turn in this entire notebook. Um, it is going to be ungraded uh, with no due date. And it's going to be under the topic of, and I'm going to push this out to them on Monday. So you wanna add, from your Google Drive. Um, you're gonna hit My Drive, um, Lesson 2, Student Copy, Insert. So you need to make sure that there's a copy for each student, um, and then you can assign it. I'm gonna save it as a draft, like I said, because I don't want them to play with it <laughs> until Monday. Um, and I will be making some updates before then. Um, but that is how you assign the digital interactive notebook to the students. Okay, so, so this is how we're going to push out new work onto the student slides. So this appears my master copy. And let's say on the vocabulary, let's just say I have transformations. Okay, and let's say I say write the three different rigid transformations and give an example of each, not give, uh, draw an example of each using the shapes tools. And of course these directions don't match with what they're doing right here, but let's just say that this is what I wanted them to do. Um, and so this is slide five. Okay, so on my Google Classroom, I would write, I would create a completely different assignment and I would say update and complete slide five. Okay, this way, and I'll show you how I'm, I have my students turn in one slide at a time, but this way um, they are just updating and completing one slide or two slides or three slides at a time and only turning in those slides to grade because if they turn in this entire book, let's say on Monday they turn in an assignment and they turn in the entire book, they're not gonna be able to do Tuesday's assignment until you grade it and return it to them, which you're not gonna wanna be grading 200 books in a night when they turn in their assignment. You wanna give yourself a few days, so just um, don't ever have them turn in their entire book to you on Google Classroom or whatever, um, whatever you're using, um, but don't have them turn in the entire book unless you know you're gonna grade them right away and return it back to them because they can't make any edits once they've turned it in until you return it to them, okay? And that goes for any type of assignment. But here, if you notice, I say update and complete slide five, so they're gonna go to their student copy Okay, this slide two right here is still linked, but there's no update because I didn't do anything to slide two. Slide three is the same, slide four is the same, but once I go to slide five, notice I have this update button, and this is on my student copy. So I'm going to update, or you would tell them to update, and there it is. So anything you put, whether it's pictures, graphic organizers, any type of direction, or anything you put on the slide will update onto their slide. Isn't that really cool? 
So you don't have to have your whole interactive notebook done from the beginning. Um, and those of you who are just starting to play around with interactive notebooks, make your interactive notebook 10 pages, okay? And have them do those PDF worksheets. You can make screenshots. So all of your PDFs that you want them to do, take a screenshot of a couple problems at a time and put five problems on a page and have them do that. Then the next day, put five more problems on the next page and have them update that. So it's just a way to play around with these digital interactive notebooks. It's another way to engage your students because trust me, they love creating like, so I, I had a whole thing on like how to mask their images, how to um, get different text. Um, so I showed them how to insert word art and how to play around with the drop shadows and all that. They loved it. So if you want that tutorial, I can link it down below or I can send that to you personally. If you just let me know down in the comments if that's something you're interested in. Um, I do have a lot of Google slide tutorials out there on my channel. So um, look, you can go ahead and look at those as well. But um, I just gave a tutorial out to my students and I had them um, play around with the tools on Google slides. So that's something you'll want them to be well versed in is how to work all the tools on Google Slides. And I can definitely um, give you tutorials to help you out with that if you're interested. Um, so that is how you um, link your slides. And now I'm going to show you um, how they will turn in their slides. Okay, so let's say this is, um, let's say you had them, this was the student copy and now they've updated it and now they are going to work on their transformations. Um, so let's say they do a translation. So they're going to um, copy and paste and move it over to the right. Okay, make an arrow tool. Okay, and show that that was a translation and they just have to label this. Let's say they do translation, they do a reflection and they do a rotation. Okay, um, when they go to turn this into me, um, I'm gonna walk you through how to create an assignment first. So I would say here, update and complete slide five in your digital interactive notebook. I would give them instructions on exactly how to do that and how to turn it in. Um, make everything, all your due dates, your topic. Um, and then I wouldn't add anything because they would already have their digital interactive notebook um, assigned to them. So I am going to just assign this just so you can see how it's done. And then I'm going to go to my student user and show you what that looks like. So on their end, they're gonna see this assignment, update and complete slide five in your digital interactive notebook. So they're gonna view the assignment and usually my, um, there'll be a description right here that tells them how to turn it in, but since I'm just gonna tell you, um, then we don't need to do that. So I'm gonna take you back to my digital interactive notebook, and this is their slide five that they just worked on, and it's gonna say to copy the, the URL for slide five. So I tell my students, you have to be, um, slide five has to be highlighted, it has to show your work, and then they turn it in. So they copy the URL, they go back to their Google Classroom, and they paste the URL in um, the private comment section and press post. And this way, when I go to grade, so right here, when I'm going to grade, um, I will see nothing in here, but I'll see this um, in the private comments. And what I can do is triple click to highlight and I'll right click and hit go to. And this will open up their digital interactive notebook to the page um, that was assigned. So if they're doing multiple pages, so let's say if you had them do slides five, six, seven, and eight, they only have to turn in the URL to slide five. And that way it just opens up to that page that you're grading and it's not, it's not turning in the book so they can still make their edits, um, but they're turning in this assignment that's worth however many points that you put out there for this specific assignment. And I really like this way of doing it because I don't have to go and make sure that I grade 200 assignments in one night and I can still make sure that the students um, are turning in their work each night. I, I really, really like this strategy. So I hope that you guys found some 
some inspiration in this and that you can use this in your classroom because I love it and this is the way I have them turn in one slide at a time or two slides or three slides at a time without having to turn in their whole notebook, okay? So, so far we've gone over how to push out the slides, how to link their slides to yours so that when you make edits, they can see them and they can complete um, update and complete their slides. Um, we've gone over how, to, how they can turn in their slides to an assignment that you put out on Google Classroom. Um, one more thing that I've wanted to go over with you was how to grade with rubrics um, and how to revise um, or bring back their work when they say that they've made a mistake uh, because that will happen if you have a lot of students it's bound that one or two will make a mistake on doing their digital interactive notebook so I want to show you right now how to restore or view their history so that we can bring back um, deleted work that they might have done, deleted slides that they may have accidentally deleted because technology is awesome and we can bring back those deleted slides. So if they try to pull a fast one, you're right there with an answer. And if they really did make a mistake, then you're right there to be their savior and fix their work so that they don't stress and worry about it. Um, so let's go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so this is my master copy on slide seven. And so if this was their notes that they had to take for the day. And let's say on my student copy, you're like, oh, I don't see any notes. Oh, it's not here, so I'm not gonna do it. Or what can I do so that I can have my notes back or something happened, right? They deleted it, something happened. Um, and so you need to help them get it back. Um, what you can do, you would click on that link to open their book um, and you would see that yes, indeed, the notes are missing and you need to get them back. So from their version of their notebook, you would go to file and go to version history. Now from here, you would click on see version history. And from here, you would be able to see every time they logged in um, and what they've done. And so this is a new notebook. Um, it is the start of their lesson two, uh, which was on September 28th. So this student only logged in on September 28th and then September 30th and then today, which is October 1st. Um, and so let's say you go back to the first version and it's there, then that's it. You don't have to go any further. But let's say you go back here and it's not there, then you would just keep going back and back and back. And this is the version. This first version is the one that you originally pushed out to them. So would they lose their work? Yes, if you um, restored it from this version. Um, they would lose all of the work that they've done in it. Um, and so I want this version back. Okay, so I'm gonna click on it and then go right here to this button that says restore this version. Okay, and I will click on that and click restore and it will go back to where slide seven and has the notes now. Okay, and they can finish doing this and everything else in their notebook. Okay, so you can also use this to just see um, how your students are doing like are they logging in are they working on their notebook and when so you can tell like did they do everything last minute or have they been logging in throughout the lesson so you can also name these versions so they're named right now by the date um, and if you notice right now this is the restored version and so if i didn't want whatever i did if i didn't want to happen i could always go right back to what it was before and so that's really cool in case you make a mistake um, but just always um, reiterate to your students the importance of Command Z or Control Z or the undo button. That is our best friend in technology. So, um, so yeah, we didn't talk about grading with the rubric, but if you want to see that in a separate video, let me know and I can um, push that out because I do have a specific rubric that I use. So if you want to see that and if you want to use my template, then just let me know and I can create a separate video for that because this video is already a long video. All right, so if you made it to the end of this video, you guys are trying to do the best for your students and I'm right there with you. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your teacher friends, and yeah, that's all I got. So if you have any comments, any other tips for us, please leave it down in the comments below. Subscribe if you want more. Um, I make videos once a week. I am going to have the link down below for the digital interactive notebook as well as some student tutorials so look down in the description for that all right guys 
Um, that is all for me. As always, go out there, enjoy the rest of your day, and go do something great. Bye, guys.